So let's try and do that. Uh, so let me just write this down. Converting the Phillips curve. Okay. So what do we know about the unemployment rate? The unemployment rate is basically just the number of unemployed people. Let me write this differently. This is capital U divided by the labor force. So suppose your labor force is 100 people. 10 of them do not have work. So 10 by 100, 10%. That's your unemployment rate, 10%. We're going to modify this into, uh, instead of U, we're going to write L minus N divided by L, where L is the labor force, the size of the labor force, and N is the number of people who are employed. So going back to the same example, uh, if the labor force is 100 and 90 people have employment, so N is 90, we have 100 minus 90 divided by 100, so it's 10%, same thing. And so this becomes 1 minus N by L. Or another way of writing this would be N is equal to L1 minus U. Okay. Now, remember we had done something in the, if I remember correctly, I think it was chapter five, but I may be mistaken, is where we just assume that output is equal to employment, just to make things simple. Uh, we just assume that everyone who is employed will be producing one unit. And so the size of employment tells us the size of output. So let's remember a very simplifying assumption. And going forward, especially if you guys do more advanced microeconomic courses, you guys will see a lot of different types of production functions that are obviously not as simple as this. But in macroeconomics, we're just going to take that simplifying assumption and assume that output is equal to employment is equal to L1 minus U. Okay. And so another thing we are going to do from here is we're going to take Y and we're going to subtract Y in from that. Okay, so y in is called the potential output, or this is sometimes also known as the natural rate output. So we're going to subtract y in from y, so from here. So we'll have to do the same thing here. So what we get is L1 minus U. From here, we're going to subtract YN, okay? Now, if uh, we already know what UN is, we've talked about that. So effectively, what we get, Y minus YN is equal to L, Y minus U minus L, 1 minus un because of course if we have yn then we have un that's the natural rate so y minus yn gives us l 1 minus u minus 1 plus un so the ones cancel out and what we are ultimately left with is y minus y n is equal to minus l u minus u n. Okay, so this is an important relationship. So let's talk about them uh, step by step. So hopefully the derivation is pretty straightforward starting from here up to here. It's just algebraic manipulation. But now let's talk about what we have found out. So why is the output in the economy 
and y in is the potential output. And so y minus y in is known as the output gap. It can be both positive or negative. Y, our output, can be both more than or less than the potential uh, output. Okay. And so what we find from here is that if, what was it? If unemployment is higher than the natural rate, okay? Even if you don't take a look at the equation, just think about it. There is a natural rate of unemployment and the unemployment in the economy is higher than that. More people than expected do not have a job. As a result, what will happen to our output? Output must be less than potential output. That just makes sense, right? I mean, we have less people working or we have a higher unemployment. As a result, our output is definitely less than the natural rate. And if we go through all the possible outcomes, if unemployment is less than potential rate, uh, the natural rate, then output is higher than potential output. And if they're equal, uh, okay, sorry about that. So once again, these are the findings of effectively what we've done here is uh, found a relationship between output and uh, unemployment. Now, remember what we're trying to do is convert the Phillips curve. We haven't done anything to the Phillips curve yet. So let's bring that in. So the relationship we have so far is y minus y n equals to minus L u minus u n. Okay. So what we can do from here is let's take a look at the Phillips curve right here. And we have this in the relationship that we just derived, right? Uh, this. So from here, we can find this relationship. U minus UN is equal to pi minus IE divided by minus alpha. So this is coming right from here. So let's take that relationship and bring it here. So what we get, Y minus YN equal to minus L times what we get here is pi minus IE divided by minus alpha, right? Or if we simplify, this, uh, this cancels out. So if we simplify, what we get is uh, pi minus IE equals to pi minus yn, and this whole thing is multiplied by alpha by L. Okay. So once again, even if you don't understand theoretically what's happening, hopefully the, the algebraic derivation is clear to you. Because that's quite straightforward. And what we are going to do, remember, there are two types of expectation that we can have. We've talked about this in the previous chapter. So the two types of expectation uh, for inflation, for example, we can either assume that inflation is going to fall around a certain fixed amount. So every year we expect that inflation is going to be, let's say around 5% or somewhere around that. And the inflation is usually a little bit more or a little bit less than that. This is when we have a stable situation. So let's say inflation varies from around 6% to 4% or something like that. And so every year it's safe for us to assume that inflation will be 
percent and it varies a little bit or we can also assume that inflation this year will be determined by inflation from the previous year now this is usually uh, what we do when their inflation is persistent and high we've talked about all of this already so from this equation uh, we are going to assume that the expectation we are making is based on previous year's inflation because that is a more realistic scenario. I'm not saying that this is not a good way of approaching our predictions, but number two is a bit more realistic. So let's make that assumption. And so what happens is we have uh, I t minus I t minus one, which is equal to alpha by lambda times y t minus y n t. So this now here is the Phillips curve in terms of output. We've gotten rid of u and we've introduced y okay. and once again let's take a look at what the implications are so the first thing is if our output is higher than expected output so once again think about it we were expecting a certain level of production to take place in the economy but what we realize is that we've ended up producing more so what is going to happen is that inflation this year is going to be higher than what the inflation was in the previous year because we have more production mm. the opposite is also true and of course if everything is equal this scenario okay. so basically this is what we wanted we have that now and so in the next uh, video we'll talk a bit more about theory and implications of this